Malik Neighbors had his breakout in 2022. Brian Thomas had his in 2023. Is Kyron Lacey the next one up poised for a breakout in 2024? You are Locked On LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's up, y'all? Happy Wednesday. Welcome into Locked On LSU. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So that is Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, and also YouTube. Just search Locked On LSU in the search bar on YouTube and subscribe to the Locked On LSU podcast. And then you'll get notified as soon as the podcast drops. You'll get up-to-date information on the Locked On LSU podcast. My name is Caroline Fenton, and I am your host, as I am every single day. You can follow me on Twitter at Caroline Fenton one And since today is a Wednesday, it's a mailbag Wednesday as well. So you can interact with me on Twitter. If you have questions that you want me to get to next Wednesday, feel free to send those in at Caroline Fenton one or at Locked on LSU. Or if you are watching and listening on YouTube, first and foremost, thanks for being here. But also remember that you can comment questions below. Let's get into it. Let's get into some of your questions. We had a bunch of questions since this time of year really is such a fun time of year. You've got spring practice. You've got pro days. You've got NFL draft and NFL combine things. You've got baseball now that we are in conference play. You've got March Madness. It is truly, I think March is one of the best sports months of the season. Underrated sports month of the season. Um, But let's get into it because I wanted to get into your questions. First and foremost, one of uh, one of the most intriguing questions that I, I got over the past couple of weeks is, is Kyron Lacey the next guy? That's the question, was is the Kyron Lacey the next guy? And I'm assuming what that question means is, is Kyron Lacey the next Brian Thomas of 2023 and Malik Neighbors of 2022, so on and so forth? I think Kyron Lacey very well could be the next guy, right? Because Kyron Lacey has been around. That Joe Sloan is familiar with Kyron Lacey. He's been with Kyron Lacey since the 2022 season. I think that Garrett Nussmeyer is familiar with Kyron Lacey. That Kyron Lacey now has four seasons under his belt. That, and of course, two at ULL and then uh, and then two at LSU. So Kyron Lacey has a lot of experience at the college level. The thing with Kyron Lacey has been, just from my perspective, there's just always been guys in the way. Like, if it wasn't Jure Jenkins or Malik Neighbors or Kayshawn Booty or Brian Thomas, you know, like, like there's just always been someone in front of Kyron Lacey that's been limiting him from breaking out. I think that was the same thing with Brian Thomas, that he didn't break out until 2023, frankly, because there was just too many guys ahead of him. So this feels like the perfect opportunity for Kyron Lacey. I believe this is his final year of eligibility, but my goodness, with COVID years and red shirts and so on and so forth, I really can't, honestly can't keep straight. I believe this is Kyron Lacey's final year of eligibility. So for his sake, I hope it's his breakout season because you don't get very many opportunities to be able to prove yourself, especially if your plan is to play the game at the next level. And Kyron Lacey that has shown that he is special that Kyron Lacey has speed. Kyron Kyron Lacey has hands. And he had his best year in an LSU uniform this past season, just shy of 600 yards. Found the the end zone seven times last season. Just a heads up, Kyron Lacey, who we probably viewed as, what, wide receiver three or four, if you want to put Chris Hilton or Kyron Lacey in that three or four spot. Malik Neighbors had three receiving touchdowns in 2022, and that was his breakout season. Kyron Lacey had over double that last year, and he was still not one or two. So I think absolutely Kyron Lacey has everything in his toolkit to have a breakout 1,000-plus yard season. Absolutely. And Brian Kelly talked about this with the media when he spoke to the media over the weekend, how he and Chris Hilton have both kind of embraced this leadership role, that they know that they're in a position of being that next guy up. But I will say this. For Kyron Lacey's sake, I hope that he breaks out. But for LSU, 
If it's not Kyron Lacey, it could be Chris Hilton. If it's not Chris Hilton, it could be Aaron Anderson. If it's not Aaron Anderson, what if it's Shelton Sampson or Landon Ibieta, some of these young guys that we haven't gotten an opportunity to see a lot from? What if it's CJ Daniels, the transfer from Liberty? What if it is Xavion Thomas, the transfer from Mississippi State? Like, you got a lot of options. And you have a lot of guys that could be prepped and ready to take that next step. Whether it's a thousand plus yard season or not, guys that are that now see the opportunity, that now have the experience, that now have the familiarity in the offense, and now have the opportunity to truly take that next step forward and have a breakout season. So I think Kyron Lacey could be the guy. If I had to put my money on it, on who is going to be your number one receiver this season, your leading receiver this season statistically, if I have to bet on that on March 27th, I'd put my money on Kyron Lacey. But LSU is in a position in that wide receiver room that it doesn't have to be. We all know how that feels. You know, if your roster is in a certain point where it's like, man, like if this guy doesn't have a big year, then you are screwed. It's kind of how I feel about the defensive line right now. Like if Deshaun Womack isn't able to stay healthy or take that next step forward or, uh, you know, Sean Washington doesn't take, it doesn't show you a lot this year, then it's like, well, it's not those guys. I don't know who it's going to be. At least you are in a position with this position, the wide receiver position. You have a whole heck of a lot of options. And my goodness, do you have a whole heck of a lot of talent at that position? I think Kyron Lacey can do it. Frankly, I think that he will do it. But if he doesn't do it, you got other options. That you can tailor your offense around other receivers that are breaking out, that are more poised or better fit in this offense. So for his sake, I hope it's Kyron Lacey. For Chris Hilton's sake, I hope it's him. Because these receivers that now feel this new refreshed sense of ownership and leadership over this room, the more players that you have feeling that sense of um, ownership, I almost said entitlement, but that has a negative connotation. That's not what I mean. A sense of ownership over this room, over their role. What I'm really excited to see is how each of these receivers kind of carve out their individual roles. Because I don't think that on today, March 27th at spring practice, you can say, okay, Kyron Lacey, you are going to get a majority of the touches and you're going to play the slot. And Chris Hilton, you're going to play on the outside and you're going to be our deep ball threat. Like, no, you can't do that. You have to let them carve out their roles themselves. And I'm excited to see kind of how that unfolds and who that other guy that we're not really talking about is going to be. We're talking a lot about CJ Daniels, rightfully so. And Chris Hilton and Kyron Lacey, again, rightfully so. But is there a young up-and-comer on the block who we're not even talking enough about that, you know, come November, we're like, my goodness, where did this guy come from? I feel like we probably will get to that point. And it's a good thing if it does happen, because that only means good things for this team and for this offense. More of your questions on a mailbag Wednesday coming up next. And this one is an interesting one because I always caution March optimism. And I'll get into more of what I mean about that. And we'll get into that coming up next after just a few words from our sponsors. All right, I want to tell you about Better Together. So Better Together is the first cooperative daily fantasy application. So, you know, we're in the thick of March Madness. Sweet 16 starts tomorrow, actually. So is your bracket already busted? Yeah, same. Mine was busted since like the first weekend. And if you're tired of the same old daily fantasy grind, I want to introduce to you Better Together. It's the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. So all you have to do is just pick more or less on real-time player stats. You can strategize with your partner to boost your odds and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend, grab a partner, and join the social DFS movement. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code Locked On, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. 
All right, I also want to tell you about Amazon Fire TV. So Fire TV is your destination for sports. They've got live games, highlights, in-depth analysis. Plus, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire Stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. So whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you are going to want to have a Fire TV. So you might be asking yourself, what is Fire TV? So Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands. And it's all for free. I mean, who doesn't love that? That's the best part. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and so much more so you can stay up to date on the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, Sweet 16, like I said, it starts this weekend. You got NBA, MLB, and so much more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos, whatever you're interested in, Fire TV channels has got it. So check it out on your Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Seriously. Trust me on this. It's great. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. All right, rolling along here, Locked On LSU. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I also have to ask, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? And do you find yourself trying to find your remote control to turn down the volume with all of that shouting, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every single day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a Wednesday. It's a mailbag Wednesday, and we're getting into more of your questions. We're now a few weeks into spring practice. We're getting a peek behind the curtain of what this team could look like. We're hearing about the backup quarterback battle, which of course we'll get into more on tomorrow's edition of Locked On LSU. But one uh, one person asked the question, how much more encouraged are you about the secondary based off of the first few days of spring practice? So there's a couple of different ways that I can approach this. I'll I'll just kind of couch it with maybe my caution, my my warning about spring practice or fall camp or any anything leading up to the season. It's really easy to look at everything through a glass half full approach. Which is why I think you can step away from practice and say, "Oh my gosh, you know, secondary is going to be so much better this season because From all reports, the secondaries looked really good. Three interceptions from Sage Ryan the other day. I could also say, well, three interceptions from Sage Ryan. Yeah, that's great for Sage Ryan, but what about the quarterbacks? Why are they throwing picks? Like, does Sage Ryan know the plays and he's just in the right place at the right time? Like, that very well could be the case. But is three picks from Sage Ryan maybe cause for concern about the passer? Like, there's always a way... You can look at it from a glass half full or a glass half empty because someone's got to win. Uh, it, you know, offense has got to win the day some days. Well, does that make you encouraged about the offense or does that make you discouraged about the defense? And vice versa. Like, defense could win a day. Well, does it make you encouraged about the defense or discouraged about the offense? Like, both things very much so can be true. I think, I think both you have to look at it through both scopes. So am I encouraged about the secondary? Honestly... I was even more encouraged about the secondary the day that Matt House left Baton Rouge because I thought that the team got better just because Matt House was not coordinating the defense. That sounds harsh. I don't care. The defense was that bad, and it cost you what I think a trip to the college football playoff. So I don't care about being harsh around here. I think that this team already got better. This defense already got better with the defensive coaching staff alone. And also you take into consideration. J.V. and Toviano and Ashton Stamps, both another year older with more experience coming into their second year into the program. So you can also get even more encouraged about that. 
Major Burns coming back this season. Sage Ryan, let's not forget, Sage Ryan was in the transfer portal for just like five seconds, but he decided to come back to LSU. That's a huge win, and that's a, a huge get to bring back your veterans, but to also bring back some young players that have a little bit of experience, but you expect or at least hope could take that next step forward this season. So am I encouraged about the secondary? I am more optimistic about it today than I was in December. That's not saying much. But again, I also think it's really easy to get either encouraged or discouraged on March 27th. But let's not forget, this roster's not finished. You've got players coming in throughout the summer. Let's not forget, there's no pass rush in these practices. So take all of that with a grain of salt. Let's not forget, the defensive players might know the play calls. So they know exactly where they need to be. So that then you need to take with a grain of salt. I think that this defense will be better because I think that you now have a defensive coaching staff that's putting its players in a place where they need to be. Like I've said before, I almost feel bad for Sage Ryan. Bear with me. When Sage Ryan entered the transfer portal, I thought, you know what? I don't blame him because he's constantly been in, in in flux. He's always played a position of just, hey, we need you to play wherever we need you to be. He's played at safety. He's he's played at corner. He's played in the slot. He's played nickel. Like he's needed to play several different positions. Well, maybe this year, if he gets an opportunity at the star or wherever he decides to play or wherever the coaching staff decides to put him, I'm hoping that that's the right position that he needs to be in. Brian Kelly shared that Major Burns will also play in that star position. Maybe that's the position that he needs to play. And maybe, just maybe, you elicit a better product when you have players playing in their natural positions and the positions where they're best set up to succeed. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy concept. So yes, I am encouraged about the secondary. I am excited about the secondary. I am encouraged and excited about this team as a whole. But again, remember, there's a lot of information that we don't yet have. And there's a lot of time that we have left. So encouragement on March 27th is a wonderful thing. Let's check back throughout the year. Let's check back throughout the season. But of course, obviously, it's a daily podcast. We're going to be doing check, uh, check backs every single day. So yes, encourage about the secondary. Long story short, I am. But take everything with a grain of salt. It's okay to be skeptical. And it's okay to still have questions. Pro day thoughts. We'll get into those in your pro day questions coming up next here on Locked On LSU. All right, I want to tell you about Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. So every single week, we're picking one team that stands out. It's a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. Let's talk about those North Carolina Tar Heels now. I mean, they can only be described as an armada. This one seed is as hardcore as it gets out there. So it's no wonder that they've secured a spot in the Sweet 16 this Thursday against Alabama in the NCAA tournament. That's one game that I'm circling on my calendar. I'm saying I'm not going to miss this one. North Carolina, Alabama, what a great game. Got great matchups in the Sweet 16. UNC is a favorite picked by many to make a run for the championship. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. You can shop at shopnissanusa.com. That is nissanusa.com. eBay Motors. I want to tell you about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every single time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, 
not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, rolling along here, Locked On LSU, getting into more of your questions on a Mailbag Wednesday. And this is a question that came in last minute because LSU's Pro Day was this morning. The question is just your thoughts on Pro Day. First and foremost, Malik Neighbors. That's a bad man. That is a bad man. In case you didn't know, the best receiver in college football this past season, I understand that Marvin Harrison was there. Malik Neighbors was the best receiver in college football this past season. Hey, he's a bad man. He proved it on the field. He proved it again at Pro Day. 4-3-40, a 42-inch vert. I mean, everything that you could have asked Malik Neighbors to have done, he did. And he did it better. So, to say that his draft stock was raised today, I think is fair. I do think is fair. Because Malik Neighbors is, I think, viewed in this bunch of the top three receivers in the draft of Marvin Harrison, Roma Dunze, and then obviously himself. There has been, throughout the draft process, just kind of a default. Marvin Harrison is the best. And then it's Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, in whatever order, pick your poison. But I saw Adam Schefter's tweet today, and he said, there's a lot of scouts and GMs across the NFL that now view Malik Neighbors as the number one receiver. And that's saying a lot based off of how much respect Marvin Harrison Jr. has, eyes and trophy finalist this past season, the Bolitnikoff winner, even though I don't think he should have been. I think it should have gone to Malik Neighbors. Surprise, surprise. LSU alum and LSU homer thinks that Malik Neighbors should have won the Bolitnikoff, but still. I mean, Malik, uh, Marvin Harrison has a lot of respect, and he deserves a lot of respect. But Malik Neighbors just continues to prove that he is a sound investment for any NFL team that is lucky enough to take him. The other side of that is I've heard a lot of criticism of Jaden Daniels pro day. A lot of clips coming out of, of receivers really having to kind of stretch to make plays, whether it's, you know, tiptoeing on, on the sideline or whether it's kind of like jumping up to grab a ball. And the conversation has been, well, with no pass rush and no defense and your receivers are still struggling to make plays on these balls. Like, what are they going to do when there is a pass rush and when there is a defense? My response to that is, well, I mean, like, you have a lot of tape and film that you can watch when there is a pass rush and there is a defense and he's still making those throws. Is it cause for concern? I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm not a general manager. I don't know how much a general manager prioritizes a pro day versus film. And I do think that it probably differs per general manager. Do I think that Jaden Daniels now all of a sudden is going to fall to the second round? Like, no, I don't. I still think that Jaden Daniels is going to be a top three pick in this year's draft. I do. Because I think he is that good of a prospect. And I think that he gets the respect of that many GMs across the NFL. They say, yeah, like that, that is our quarterback of the future. Would it have been nice? If Jaden Daniels showed up and show out, of course, absolutely, because now the court of public opinion opens up this, you know, this pathway for criticism that happens every single year during the draft process, specifically with the quarterbacks. That it's like every single day, it's a new, you know, quarterback du jour. That they, you know, today this is the guy. Tomorrow this is the guy. You know, tomorrow it's going to be Bo Nix. All of a sudden, Bo Nix, number one overall pick. Caleb Williams, overrated. Jaden Daniels, overrated. We do this every single year. I remember last season, there was, you know, the, the sports books were popping off with bets for Will Levis to be the number one overall pick. Will Levis fell to the second round. Um, so these things are unpredictable. Bryce Young was expected to be the number one overall pick. And you know what? Guess what? He was. CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson were projected to be top five picks. And guess what? They were. So I'm not overly concerned about Jaden Daniels Pro Day. But again, I can't speak for 32 general managers across the league. You know, I can't speak for Adam Peters, the general manager in Washington, if Jaden Daniels Pro Day turned him off or not. I can't speak to, who the hell even is the general manager in New England now that Bill has gone? Frankly, I don't know. Um, the general manager in New England, I don't know how turned off they are, but I do know that New England doesn't have a quarterback. I do know that Washington 
doesn't have a quarterback. I know Minnesota at 11 doesn't have a quarterback. Denver at 11, they don't have a quarterback either. They're going to need to find those quarterbacks somewhere. And Jaden Daniels is going to have to find a place to play. So not overly concerned. But I do want to bring up Ian Rappaport's tweet. I don't know if you saw it. Um, And if you're watching on the YouTube, I'm going to try and get the photo up. If you saw Jaden Daniels, Ian Rappaport tweeted out this photo of Jaden Daniels. And the photo of Jaden Daniels is like, I'm guessing it's on the sidelines or like during warmups before a game because he's got his pads on, got the jersey on, got the helmet on. But it's obviously not in the middle of a play. So I'm guessing it's during warmups. So Ian Rappaport tweets something. I don't even know what the tweet said. I'm just focused on the photo. He tweets something about Jaden Daniels and then a photo of Jaden Daniels. And his elbow looks so freaking weird and like all like all cockamamie. And it looks like, and I'm trying to pull this picture up. It's tough being a, a producer and a, a host at the same time. Um, it looks like there's a chunk of his elbow elbow that's missing like it it literally looks like I'll see if I can get it up here here it is okay you can see me in the background too I'm sorry do you see that do you see his elbow like what is that and I this caught fire on Twitter this photo is now going viral on Twitter like do you see how there's like a it looks like a chunk of his his arm is missing It looks like his elbow is like a kneecap. That can't be real, right? Like that that cannot be a real photo. Because I've seen a whole lot of photos of Jaden Daniels in my day. I've watched a lot of Jaden Daniels in person on TV. His elbow does not look like that. Like what? What in the world is that? And then his bicep looks all funky. Like is that a shadow? Is this an AI photo? Like what? What? And now all of Twitter is so perplexed of like, hold on. I'm sorry. Is his arm broken? Not that this has anything to do with the draft or his draft stock, but like, I'm sure that you've seen this on Twitter if you are as, you know, perpetually online as I am. Well, like, if you have an idea, like, let me know. Like, I, I, it's either Photoshopped or AI or I, I don't know what that is. Like, I just can't stop looking at it. I keep trying to rationalize it in my head. And if you're listening on the podcast, I have a, a photo of it up on the on the live stream on YouTube. But if you haven't seen it, go to Ian Rappaport's Twitter. Or just honestly search Jaden Daniels on Twitter. I'm sure it's going to be the first thing that pops up. Like, what is that? I don't know. Weird. Weird. Um, but anyways, I... Maybe Jaden Daniels will uh, address it. We want answers, Jaden. We want answers. All right. Thanks to everyone that got their questions in on a Mailbag Wednesday. But just a reminder, we do this every week. So send your questions in on Twitter. My Twitter is at Caroline Fenton one If you're watching on the YouTube, it is up on the screen right now. You can send them in at Locked On LSU. You can comment them below on the YouTube page. But overall, just appreciate everyone for their involvement in the podcast, their interaction with the podcast. I appreciate you all more than you know. But that's going to do it for me today. Thank you for making Locked On LSU your first listen every single day. More spring practice talk and more and uh, more pro day talk coming up on tomorrow's edition of Locked On LSU.